It had been several months since I'd seen Steph's of Raw, and then I ran into her at the Batman screening. The Batman is trending pretty hard right now on YouTube, as it should be, because it's a damn good movie. I watched it twice, you've watched it once, mm -hmm. and I love it. I didn't think I was gonna love it more, and I do. I loved it even more the second time watching it, despite having an annoying person next to me, which I'll get into later on if there's time, because this is a longer video. Welcome, folks, I'm Jabby Kuwait, joined by Steph's of Raw, and we are looking at Pitch Meeting's Ultimate Batman, Dark Knight Trilogy Pitch Meeting Compilation. And I looked at my Get Jabby YouTube channel, I'm like, oh, I guess I haven't like reacted to any of the Batman uh, Dark Knight pitch meetings at all. So I was very excited to look at this because we're gonna look at all three back to back to back. If you guys haven't already, uh, subscribe to Ryan George as well. He's got his own YouTube channel. You should definitely, really, really funny stuff. So here we go. So you have a Batman movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing, George Clooney's gonna be really excited to make another one. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you don't want a Batman and Robin sequel? No, I was thinking we could do Batman's origin story, but dark and gritty. It's a guy that dresses up like a bat to fight crime, though. It's not really the kind of thing we can make dark and gritty. Gritty. Of course we can. How so? Well, for starters, by casting a very serious British actor with a temper. Oh yeah, that is a good start. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, at the beginning of the movie, we're gonna have a young Bruce Wayne fall into a well and get traumatized by bats. Oh no. Yeah, he's gonna have nightmares and his dad's gonna be like, oh man, it's the bats again, isn't it? <laughs> oh, poor little Bruce. <laughs> yeah, so then his parents bring him to an opera with just a bunch of bats in it. Wow, that is pretty inconsiderate. Yeah, so then he asks if they can leave and both his parents get shot in the alley. Oh my god. So as you can imagine, Bruce grows up with fear being a big part of his life. The fear of guys in alleys with guns? No, the fear of bats. Oh, I kind of thought that watching someone murder his parents in an alley would trump the bat thing, but okay. No, 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 the tiny flying mammals are what spooked him the most. Well, okay then. So then a bunch of years later, this guy Ducard wants to recruit him into the League of Shadows so he can be a ninja. Ninjas? Are you sure this is a dark and gritty film? Yeah, no, they're like serious ninjas, <laughs> if you say so. So then Bruce and Ducard card kind of skate around on an ice rink and play hide and seek together. Oh, uh, and so then Bruce is a ninja? Almost, but first Ducard is like, hey, execute this criminal real quick. Oh, these are some serious ninjas. I know, right? But then Bruce is gonna say, I'm not gonna be an executioner, you doofus. Get out of here with that nonsense. <laughs> so what does he do? Well, instead of killing the guy, he, you know, makes the entire <laughs> building explode. <laughs> oh my god, what? Yeah, he just blows the entire place to hell. But what if people die? Oh, they do die. Oh, they do. Yeah, the leader, Rob Ra's al Ghul dies and a bunch of other guys get ragdolled around. A lot of ninjas die. So what the hell was that thing about not being an executioner? He just killed a bunch of people. No, he didn't kill them. The explosion did. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Anyway, so then he's gonna save Descartes from falling off a cliff and head back to Gotham. Wow, so he's like a rogue ninja? Yeah, basically, and he hates crime. And what does he do in Gotham? Well, he's gonna embrace his fear and become Batman. Oh, okay, I guess it's good that his childhood fear wasn't the alleyway murderer guy. <laughs> yeah, or instead of Batman, he would have been alleyway murder man. Mm. Definitely less cool. <laughs> so he's gonna go see this guy, Fox, that works at Wayne Enterprises. Okay. And it turns out that Fox has a bunch of cool superhero gadgets lying around that he's been working on because of reasons. That's very convenient for his plan of becoming a superhero. Yeah, so Bruce is gonna get a cool costume and a bunch of gadgets. Oh yeah? Yeah, he's gonna get some cool explosive things. And what does he use those for? He's gonna throw them at some cops that are chasing him and make their car flip. What? That could have easily killed them. Yeah, but it's not gonna. <laughs> right, but he couldn't have known that. If a car flips, there's a good chance and someone could die. But nobody's <laughs> gonna be killed, so it's okay. Okay, man. Batman's also gonna become friends with this cop, Jim Gordon. Okay. And they're gonna have these little chats together throughout the movie. Oh, they are? Yeah, like Gordon's gonna put out the trash at home and Batman is just waiting outside for him. <laughs> Wait, so Bruce was just hanging out outside waiting? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What if the trash hadn't been full that night? Well, maybe he knew that their garbage was gonna be full that night, you know? He is the world's greatest detective. But that would mean he's been keeping tabs on how full their garbage can is, like on a daily basis. Uh, I guess so. What if Gordon's wife had put out the trash? Well, he must have known that Jim's the one to put out the trash. Wow, Batman must have spent a lot of time watching over their trash habits. Yeah, must have. Anyway, he's all- <laughs> God. This is genius. <laughs> so the Ra's al Ghul thing, when everyone gets killed, I haven't seen Batman Begins in a minute. I don't remember exactly what happens. I think I remember thinking, okay, so you're not supposed to kill him, but everyone died. He didn't necessarily make everybody die, right? I, it's been so long since I've seen it. Yeah, I don't remember how the explosion went off. I thought it was an accident. Yeah, I thought it was an accident also. People are so serious about Batman not killing people, which yeah. I get if you are hardcore to the comic. This whole bit about <laughs> waiting outside Gordon's place. All I start thinking about is, how long was Batman just chilling there? Like, don't you get bored? I guess he's a bat, just waiting. 
What an existence. Like, as opposed to just like knocking on the door or calling him up or something, like you're just waiting. Like, is it worth it? I want <laughs> Batman to text you up, question mark. Yeah, come outside. exactly. Hey, what you doing? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to wait there for like hours for Gordon to show up? That's the element of surprise. Exactly. <laughs> Got him. So gonna do this thing where he disappears mid conversation. Why would he do that? Cause it's mysterious. Mm -hmm. It's rude and inconsiderate, <laughs> but also mysterious. Yeah, I guess. And we're gonna have Bruce reconnect with his childhood crush, Rachel. Oh, we are. Yeah, and they're gonna reminisce about how they always used to steal condensed milk from Alfred. Condensed milk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we maybe change that to candy or something? No, you remember when you were a kid and you'd always be like, mother, could I please have some sweet, sweet condensed milk? Uh, and she'd be all like, not until you've brushed mother's hair. Not until you've brushed it well. Oh, I think you might have had a weird childhood. <laughs> oh, did I? Dang it, that explains some stuff. Anyway, what are the other characters in the movie? Well, there's this guy, Jonathan Crane, AKA Scarecrow. Oh yeah? Yeah, and he has this fear gas that makes it go crazy and super scared of stuff. Wow. And Rachel is an attorney now and she's getting real suspicious of him. Oh, so what does he do? He shows her that they've been dumping fear poison into Gotham's water supply for weeks. Why would he show her that? So we could see it. Oh, okay, gotcha. And we're gonna learn that this <laughs> no, stuff you need that you need that you have to have that you have to have the bad guy explaining what he's doing yeah. you just have to i know how silly that looks it's a trope and all that because it's kind of goofy like why would the bad guy exp you need that otherwise you don't know what's happening yeah. like it's very important so you understand the motivation with the bad guy and all that stuff like that it, stuff is important i agree didn't yeah. i hate when they don't explain what's ha what, what the mastermind of a villain is because yeah. that's what makes films interesting yeah there's a narcissistic element as well where it's like there's a glory behind it yeah you know and so of course they're gonna relish in explaining it like look what we're gonna yeah. do <laughs> why would he show her that so we could see it oh okay gotcha and we're gonna learn that this stuff gets activated when water evaporates so the plan is to use targeted microwaves to do that wait but you said they've been dumping this stuff in the water for weeks yeah pretty evil right I mean, yeah, but hasn't anyone boiled water or made tea or had a hot shower? I guess not. No, not in several weeks. Wow, people in Gotham must stink. Probably. <laughs> Very stinky citizens. <laughs> We're also going to learn that Ducard was the real Ra's al Ghul the whole time. Oh, so not the one that Batman murdered? No, that was a fake one. Right. And he wants to take the big microwave on a train ride to Wayne Tower and vaporize all the water. Oh, well, that's not very nice. Nope, and some of the stuff is going to get released and people are going to get all scared and crazy. Oh, no. Yeah, and Rachel's going to run into this kid that Batman had a moment with earlier on in the film. Oh, what are the odds of that? Well, what are the odds of anything? I don't know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a satisfying answer. And then that scarecrow guy is gonna pop out and attack them. Oh man, it's gonna be hard for Rachel and a child to take on a Batman villain. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, she's gonna be scared for a second, but then she's gonna, you know, tase him in the goddamn face. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, he freaks out. His horse freaks out. His horse? Did I not mention he's on a horse? He's on a horse. Oh, attacking people while on horseback is tight. Yeah, it is. So what happens next? Well, the... <laughs> it's super easy, barely can be. She's just gonna tase him in the goddamn face. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a problem with the way Rachel's story was told? I didn't like Maggie um, Gyllenhaal replacing her. What about her? Katie Holmes doesn't get as much heat, but I feel like that character in general, in this trilogy specifically, a lot of people feel like she wasn't explored enough. Oh, God, no. The thing that the Batman, the new one, taught me is there is an emotional weight to that movie that is unmatched completely in any other Batman film. There's no other Batman, except for Mask of the Phantasm. That's the only one, which is a cartoon. If you haven't seen that, you should you should definitely watch it's it. It's next on my watch list. Uh, I just watched your favorites, Michael Keaton's. Oh, yeah. For the first time. Yeah, they're great. Amazing. Right? Yeah. I mean, they're campy, but they're great. Yeah. With this, what I realized is um, Christopher Nolan sometimes has a hard time with, like, he makes great movies, but sometimes he has a hard time with character dimension. And when Rachel died, I didn't give a shit. Mm. Like, I just didn't care. Like... You know, Batman's trying to get there and he, and he finds uh, Harvey Dent instead. And it's like, oh, no. And then Rachel dies and everyone's sad. I'm like, I don't feel anything right now. Like, I felt nothing for her. So you're right. Savage. Like, they didn't do a very good job with her. It's just like she died and the movie went on. I'm like, cool. <laughs> Let's keep 
keep it moving. Back is tight. Yeah, it is. So what happens next? Well, the plan is for Gordon to use the Batmobile to shoot down the train tracks and stop Ra's al Ghul from getting to Wayne Tower. Oh, sounds like a good plan. Yeah, and so then, you know, he does that. Oh, well, great. And so Batman jumps onto the train to fight Ra's al Ghul. Wait, why isn't it over? I mean, the train's gonna crash. Well, he wants to fight him. Well, okay then. So then they're gonna fight a little bit and Batman's gonna be like, I'm not gonna kill you, but I don't have to save you. Okay. And so he jumps off the train and Ra's al Ghul dies. Pretty sure that's still manslaughter. <laughs> yeah, but it's not murder. No, not as much as the stuff he did earlier. So Batman's a good guy. If you say so. So what do you think of the dark and gritty Batman? Well, it sounds like a good idea, but I think we should balance out the darkness with some jokes here and there, you know? You think so? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, I don't know why. I just have this bad feeling about going too dark with it. I mean, what could go wrong with that, though? I think I, I watched Batman Begins again uh, a few years ago, and I'm like, this is actually much better than I remember. That was my feeling. I had the exact same, because yeah. I only remember Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. I yeah. like Dark Knight better, but I love Dark Knight Rises as well. And then I rewatched it. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. love a good ninja. <laughs> yeah, I find that... Um, my second viewings of stuff is usually better. I'm like known as the, sort of the curmudgeon in my group. <laughs> Even on YouTube, people are like, Jamie doesn't like anything. I'm like, actually I do. It's just, I don't like love things as often as everybody else does. And Batman Begins was one where I wasn't on board right away. I, I had a lot of complaints. And then I watched it again years later. I'm like, oh, that was actually really good. I felt the same way about surprisingly Winter Soldier, uh, Captain America Winter mm. Soldier, where I watched it, I was like, ah, ah. And I was kind of like a curmudgeon about it. Then I watched it years later. I'm like, what was I smoking? Like, this is actually really good. And sometimes when it's in a trilogy, it needs the other two to fill how the first one is. Yeah. It took me a minute to get used to just Batman, this version of Christian Bale's Batman, because at the end of it, I don't know that I felt as on board with Christian Bale's Batman as I did with Robert Pattinson's, for instance. <laughs> when Batman first came on the scene, I just thought he looked kind of funny. His head looked so big to me in Batman Begins. And then the voice just like killed me. I'm like, what is he doing? I'm like, what is his voice? I found after watching the Batman the second time, I'm like, this is my favorite Batman so far. He's the best Batman, in my opinion. And that's a that's a tall order because Michael Keaton's near and dear to my heart. You think Robert Pattinson's the best? I think he's the best Batman. Wow. Yeah, hands down. Like I watched it again last night. I'm like, this is a very, very compelling Batman. And I mean, it's helped by the fact that Matt Reeves did such a good job. Yeah, I think by far my favorite costume design. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd say that, but yes. I, yeah, I guess, yeah, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> I didn't think about yeah. it until I saw all of, in your review, some of the photos of the old Batmans. Yeah. And I never am like, oh, I don't like this costume, but I just made me think, oh, I like Robert Pattinson's look a yeah. lot. And script for me? Yes, sir, I do. So what's new with Batman? Well, his growly voice got a whole lot more growly since the first movie. Oh, he went through bat puberty? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does he sound like now? He sounds like, why do you want to kill me? Yeah. What? You garbage who kills for money. I can't <laughs> understand what you're saying. I'm not wearing hockey pants. Are you talking about <laughs> hockey? I have no idea what's going on here. You're gonna love me. Please stop. Sorry, I got carried away. That's okay, I get it. Growling is tight. It is. So what happens in the movie? Well, the bad guy in this movie is the Joker, so we're gonna open with him robbing a bank and escaping on a school bus that crashes through the wall. Not very subtle. Well, there's a line of school buses passing in front of the bank, so he blends in with them. No one notices a school bus crashing into a bank and then driving out covered in dust and bricks. They do not. Well, okay then. Anyway, we're also gonna have Bruce go on a super long side quest to China to kidnap a guy. Oh, that sounds like international national terrorism. <laughs> yeah, 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 that. I imagine it's gonna be hard for him to come up with an alibi for why he disappears at the same time as Batman appears in China. Actually, super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he's just gonna very publicly take an entire Russian ballet troupe out to party on his boat and then take off from a plane on the water. Wait, what? He's gonna party with a bunch of ballerinas on a boat. It's gonna be in the papers and everything. What if the media interviews a ballerina and she's like, yeah, the trip was great, but Bruce randomly disappeared on a mysterious airplane half way through. I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. So tell me more about the Joker. Uh, he's awesome. He has a thing where he's like, you know, so lucky it's almost supernatural. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, he comes up with these super intricate plans that completely depend on things he couldn't possibly predict going exactly the way that he predicted them. Do you have some examples? Well, like he has a plan to get arrested, but then escape by making a phone call that detonates a bomb that he planted in a prisoner's stomach, right? Okay. But that wouldn't have worked if he didn't have an officer in the interrogation room with him, or if he had been detained somewhere else, or if the prisoner had lifted up his shirt at any point. Oh yeah, that does sound super lucky. Right, so that kind of thing is gonna happen 
isn't, you know, a lot. What kind of other stuff does the Joker do? Well, we're gonna have a scene where Joker and his goons take over a fundraiser for Harvey Dent. Okay. And Joker's gonna throw Rachel out of a super high window. Uh-oh. Yeah, and Batman's gonna jump out of the window and catch her, so they're both gonna fall. Wow, how hurt are they? Not at all. Oh. Yeah, they land on a car, which makes it okay because cars are so soft and squishy. <laughs> and what happens with the Joker? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, Rachel and Batman flew out the window, but he's still upstairs with a bunch of people, right? Oh. Right. Did you forget to write an end to that scene? <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie. I guess we could just keep moving on with the movie and hope no one notices. Fingers crossed. So oh. ever since the first viewing of the of the Dark Knight, I was always confused by that. You know, sometimes some things just kind of fly over. You're like, that's ah, fine. It's and you just keep moving along, and you, you're not really holding on to certain points of logic because you're just sort of wrapped up in the adventure. That was a moment where I was like, oh, what? Like, <laughs> you wait a second. You just. There's a bunch of people up there with the Joker. Did he just leave? Like, what happened? You didn't explain anything. And there's no deleted scene that couples with the DVD to explain what happened there. It's just like, no, we moved on. The movie just keeps rolling. It's the weirdest thing. Maybe that's um, all he wanted to do. What? Joker. He just wanted to Crash stir the party, it up yeah. a little bit and then leave. Threaten the old guy. Yeah. Them crashing into the car was a little bit odd. I, th I, I just imagined that maybe there was something in his cape that helped because it they did fall off the top of the building. I'm like, because exactly what Ryan George said here, like, it's not like it's soft. It's like they, they literally crashed into the car, but he was holding Rachel. And so I'm guessing maybe his cape somehow cushioned the... Anyway, Joker's also going to do a thing where he kidnaps Harvey and Rachel and ties them up to explosives. Okay. And there's a timer, so Batman's going to have to decide who to try and save. Does he manage to save either of them? Yeah, he manages to save 25% of them. Wait, 25% of two people? Well, Rachel's going to explode and half of Harvey Dent's going to burn up. Gotcha. And so later, Joker's going to dress up as a nurse and go visit Harvey in the hospital. How does that go? Well, somehow Harvey doesn't recognize Joker till he takes off his little surgical mask. Wow, and he must really be mad at the Joker. Yeah, but Joker Joker's like, hey man, don't be mad at me for killing Rachel. Be mad at everyone else for letting me kill Rachel. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. But somehow that convinces Harvey to become like a wacky villain. Oh really? So what does he do? He goes on a killing spree where he flips a coin to see if people die or not. Maybe a little drastic. Yeah, so anyway, later Batman is gonna foil a plan of the Jokers to blow up a couple of fairies. What do you mean? Well, he pushes Joker off a building, but then he catches him because, you know, Batman doesn't kill people. Right, that's like his one rule. Exactly. Super powerful to see him stick to his moral code like that. And then he's gonna push Harvey Dent off a building and kill him. <laughs> what? Yeah, and Harvey's killed some people, so Batman takes the blame for all that. Why would he do that? Because he's the hero that Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. Oh, I don't get that. Yeah, but it sounds cool, right? I guess. So, it does why sound cool. they just blame it all on the It does sound cool. I've tried to understand what the hell that, that line means, and I'm like, it just sounds cool. It does sound cool. It just sounds cool. Dope. Yeah. Like, that was a moment of good writing on Christopher Nolan. It just sounds cool. Like, what can you say, you know? I can't believe you don't think he's a great writer. Nolan? Yeah. I wouldn't say that. His uh, premises, the, pre the, the, pre the story the, the part. Sto the stories are always interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, tell me a Christopher Nolan character that has stayed with you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, well, Joker, Batman. Well, sir, the jo okay, yes. The Joker, yes, not Batman. I love Christian Bale's Batman. Oh, do Batman. you? Yes. Okay, yes. I'll, t I'll, t I'll retract that. <laughs> a lot of Batman lovers are gonna at me in the comments. So the Joker is, I think, the most memorable of everyone he's created in, in all of Nolan's movies that I can think of. I mean, Inception, for instance, I love watching Inception. I'll wa I've watched that movie like dozens of times. Yeah. But there isn't a character in there where I go, oh my God, this is such a well-written character. It's just like, it's a fun experience. You know what I mean? I do, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. And so like, I, I love Christopher Nolan movies. I mean, I've got Interstellar on my wall for a reason, but I can't think of a character in there where I'm like, that is a dope written character. It's just like, it sort of just fits in with everything else. Whereas with the Batman, the Batman character is memorable. Like there is something memorable about Robert Pattinson's portrayal. Like I said, there's an emotional weight to it. Watching it again, I'm like, dang, like this guy's got a lot going on. And he doesn't even say a heck of a lot in the movie. No. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? I wish he said more, which is a good complaint. He's the hero that Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. Oh, I don't get that. Yeah, but it sounds cool, right? I guess so. But why wouldn't they just blame it all on the Joker? Because this is more heroic, but it's not necessary. It's heroic though. <laughs> well, okay then. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a pretty great movie. Thank you. Although to be fair, Batman is so popular these days, it'd be tough to make a movie about him that people don't like. Very true.
You got to watch the 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 Snyder cut of that movie if you haven't seen it. Batman versus Superman. I mean, I'm sure most people watching this have seen it. But Batman v Superman, the the Snyder cut, the ultimate edition is far superior. Like it makes more sense of the movie. It's still it's still a mess, but it's a way better movie. You have a Batman sequel sequel script for me? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, I do. So the bad guy in this one's gonna be Bane. And how does the movie start? Well, the CIA are gonna bring a bunch of hooded men onto their plane without checking their identities. Wouldn't they at the very least lift the hoods to check for explosives or something? No, because the CIA never investigates anything. Oh, they don't? <laughs> nope, and so it's gonna turn out that one of the hooded guys is Bane. Wow. Yeah, and he's planning on crashing the plane and staging it like an accident. How does he do that? By, you know, riddling the plane with bullets and ripping the wings off and then dropping the main cabin miles and miles away from the wings. And that's supposed to look like a normal plane crash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so tell me more about this Bane guy. Oh, well, he has big muscles and a little mask thing and he sounds real scary. Oh, what does he sound like? He says scary stuff like... <laughs> I can't, you sound like a Muppet that got stuck in a wall. Yeah, super scary stuff. I guess that would be scary. Get out of... <laughs> Get out of all the wall grover. And then we're gonna see <laughs> <laughs> That would be scary. Oh, I gotta retract something I said a little bit. There was one uh, uh character that Nolan has written that is quite memorable, and that's Guy Pierce's character in Memento. I, I, I love that movie. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen following. I haven't seen the following yet. I've watched everything else Christopher Nolan has done. The following is his very first movie. It's a black I and white seen movie. That. Most people haven't. I hear that you don't need to. <laughs> yeah, his character in um in Memento, uh, I don't remember the name of the main character, but I just, yeah, just remember as the, him as the dude. It was definitely memorable. It was definitely an interesting guy. Because you're in his head the whole time, yeah. you know? So. Yeah. Batman. Oh, I can't wait for some Batman action. Well, you're gonna have to, because he can barely walk. What? Why? Because he was Batman for like a year, so now he has no more cartilage in his knees. So he can't physically be Batman anymore. Exactly. Also, he doesn't want to, so it's gonna be quite a while before we see him as Batman. Okay, well, I guess watching Bruce Wayne limp around for an hour will be somewhat entertaining. Yeah, and I think waiting for him to become Batman again will make it that much more exciting when he finally does. Maybe. Anyway, later Bane and his guys are gonna attack the stock exchange. Hold on, there is truth to that though. There's truth to that when you hold off showing a character, it does make it more exciting. I mean, with Spider-Man, I remember it was like 45 minutes into the movie before we properly saw him in his costume, and that was exciting stuff. Yeah, because you want to see them when they're not in uniform yeah. and understand the character. I think that's one of the coolest parts about Batman is that Bruce Wayne matters too. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and at the same time, the bad guys are going to use Bruce's fingerprints to make a bunch of trades and lose all his money. Well, <laughs> obviously they were fraudulent trades, right? There's no way people will treat them as real. Oh, they will. So Bruce is poor now, and they shut off all the lights at the man. They immediately shut his lights off? Yep, right away. He's poor. Well, I should probably point out that that's not how anything works. Oh, I'd much prefer if you didn't point that out. Oh, okay, never mind. Anyway, we're also gonna have this cop, Blake, figure out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Well, that's a tough one to crack. Must have been hard to do. Actually, it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he kind of just recognized the look in his eyes that angry orphans get. Oh, that was easy. Yep, so later Batman's gonna get fixed with magic braces that give him superhuman kicks we'll never reference again. Well, Oh, so then he becomes Batman again? So then he becomes <laughs> Batman again for a couple of minutes. Wait, what? Catwoman is gonna bring him to Bane and Bane's gonna break his back. Oh my god. Yeah, so he can't physically be Batman anymore. His body's broken. Right. Yeah, and I think waiting for him to become Batman again will make it that much more exciting when he finally does. Didn't we just do this? I feel like we just did this for an hour. We did, and it was so special. <laughs> Stop. I love that moment where he goes, and then he's Batman again for a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Bane did that. Yeah. He broke his back. Yeah, that's like, that a huge part of the movie. I know, I haven't seen this one in years. Okay. Years. Well, I figure, you know, let's do it again. Well, okay then. So Bane is gonna fly with Batman all the way to this crazy prison in India and explain to him how he's gonna torture his soul. Bane's gonna fly with him all the way to India just to tell him that and then get on a plane and go back home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not just tell him before sending him there? <laughs> well, it's more dramatic. It is more dramatic. It to him there. It's committed. Right, but that's like 30 hours of of air travel. It is. Right. Could have recorded a video. <laughs> yeah, so back in Gotham, they're gonna be like, you know what? Enough is enough. Let's just send all the police officers into the sewers and smoke Bane out once and for all. Did you say all the police officers? Yeah, I think that's standard procedure. When the police really want to capture someone, they just send everybody. Oh, I didn't know that. Where'd you learn that? It's just how I assume police things work. Oh, okay. So how many officers are we actually talking here? Well, let's see. New York City has something like 40,000 police officers for a population of 8 million, and we're saying that Gotham them has a population of 12 million. Okay. So by that logic, I guess Gotham would have something in 
the range of 60,000. So they send 60,000 police officers into the sewers. <laughs> it certainly seems like that's what we're going with. Well, okay then. So then Bane's gonna blow up a bunch of bombs and trap the cops in the sewers. Aren't there like thousands and thousands of manholes they could escape through? What the hell is a manhole? You've never heard of manholes? Manholes are tight. You realize this is not yeah. an adult film, right? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Manholes. Oh, okay. Anyway, Bane is also gonna destroy the bridges and reveal that he is an atomic bomb. Uh-oh. Yeah, and if anybody tries to leave, he's gonna detonate it. And also, it's just gonna detonate itself in like five to six months. So their plan is to blow up Gotham whenever, but also just let it blow up in five to six months? Something like that. So if it's gonna blow up either way, why not just blow it up immediately? Because Batman needs time to fix his broken back. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> so yeah, then Batman has to get out of this prison. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to do that with a broken back. <laughs> Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because Bane hooked him up with a doctor who fixes his back with some rope and a solid punch to the spine. Wow. And then the prison has absolutely no guards, plus you can just climb out of it if you're agile enough. That is a very convenient prison. Yeah, so then back in Gotham, Commissioner Gordon's being forced to walk on thin ice and he's about to fall through and die. Uh-oh. But that's when Batman shows up, just in time. How does Batman showing up make the ice any less dangerous? Unclear, but Batman is back, baby. Everything's okay. How did Batman get back from India with no money or resources into a city that's under lockdown? Unclear, but he's back with just 12 hours before the bomb goes off. Wow, so what does he do? Well, he spends the first four hours or so on a little art project. Oh, he does? <laughs> yeah, he paints a big old bat symbol. It doesn't seem like the most pressing issue. Art therapy is very effective. It's a great way to prepare for a fight. Okay, good to know. So then Catwoman blows- I always think about those kinds of things. I'm like, what? Where, where did he get the resources for this? He's on his own. Who's helping him do to this? To get home? <laughs> Look, I that, never thought about that. That looks so complicated. Like. I mean, it's definitely making a point, like, oh God, how did he, yeah. You know, when you're watching the movie, you're not really thinking about it, but I, I did think about it while watching it because I'm overly analytical. I'm, I'm just like that, I'm like, I don't know how he did that. Like, he's by himself, he came, like he said, he came from India and having flown that, have you flown to India? Like, it's a long flight. That's over 24 hours, yeah. you're in the air. And if you have no money, that's even more complicated. Like, what resources do you, like, how are you gonna, you know, I was only focused about him getting out of the cave, and yeah. then I didn't. <laughs> just yeah, clocked didn't even, re clocked didn't, out. didn't even record the rest of clocked that. Clocked out. Did you say it like, or did they say it? Like, it, it is dramatic. The effect of Bane being there with Batman in that prison, saying, you know, taking him to India, like that is quite effective. It has more weight than if it was a recording or something. If you're a villain and you've committed your life to villain, villainry, yeah. villain tree, yeah. villainizing, then I hope you follow me to where you take me, yeah. just to make a point. Yeah. I'll respect you more. <laughs> was up one of the sewer exits and all the cops run out clean shaven and ready to fight. Clean shaven? Well, yeah, because as you know, the sewers are filled with enough shaving equipment for 60,000 men to groom themselves for six months. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Well, now you do. So then all the cops charge at Bane's men like it's medieval times or something. Don't the henchmen have machine guns? Well, what good are machine guns against batons and a couple of pistols? They'd be very good, I imagine. Well, anyway, it's gonna end up being a fist fight, so whatever. Well, whatever then. And then Batman and Bane are gonna fight, but now Batman's really good because he did some push-ups in prison. Wow. But then this lady Miranda that Batman hooked up with is gonna stab him. Wait, what? Yeah, she's gonna reveal that she's actually Talia, the daughter of Ra's al Ghul from the first movie. Oh, pretty crazy twist, right? I guess. And then Batman is gonna chase her because she takes off in a truck with the bomb in it. Very exciting. Yeah, and Gordon's bouncing around in back trying to turn the bomb off or something. Oh boy. And then the truck is gonna flip and Talia's gonna die. Oh, she is. Yeah, and I'd love it if the actress could play it as if she forgot she was supposed to die in the scene and then suddenly remembered. We can arrange that. And what about <laughs> Gordon? How does his death play out? Oh, he's totally fine. Really? Wasn't he in the truck too? Yeah, he was just in the back bouncing around with a two-ton bomb and he was just out of the hospital, but he's fine. Well, great. So then Beth I did think about that when watching the movie. I thought that was hilarious. Her... No, uh, uh, Gordon. Gordon coming out. Because like... Yeah, the truck was flipping around and stuff like that, and he's got this this bomb, and it's like tumbling and whatnot, and then it cuts to, and Gordon gets out, and I'm, I laughed in the theater. I was like, that's hilarious. There's no way he'd be okay. He, he, would, he was on the walls. Yeah, he would have been splattered. <laughs> Batman's gonna fly the bomb out of the city just in time, and it's gonna explode with a six mile blast radius. Wow, so Batman is gonna die? That's insane. Nope, he's gonna be fine too. But how? Autopilot, so he jumps out just before it explodes. But a six mile radius? Yeah, well, he's a fast swimmer, I guess. Get off my back, please, and thank you. Well, okay then. <laughs>
Robin. Also, that Blake guy is Robin. Sure, why not? So what do you think? It sounds great. Fantastic. Yep, I think we'll have made a trilogy that everybody involved will be proud of. That's just, I mean, Christian Bale. I remember when, when uh, I think it was ben, ben Affleck got cast as Batman. Christian Bale had a moment of, of like a, a pregnant pause with himself going, Oh God, I'm not Batman anymore. I read that somewhere, I forget where. For some reason, what something you said earlier it triggered this uh, memory, this thought I had from last night, which is um, I decided randomly to look up uh, why Michael Keaton didn't sign up for another Batman movie after Batman Returns. Because I was always curious about that as a kid. I'm like, why Why did we get Val Kilmer? I was sad that he left the role for Val Kilmer. And I know there's a lot of people who prefer Val Kilmer, but anyway, Michael Keaton apparently signed on to do the third one with Joel Schumacher, a new director, not Tim Burton. And Michael Keaton just couldn't understand the vision that Joel, Mook, Joel, Joel Schumacher had because Joel Schumacher wanted to get away from the dark, sad, of Batman and make it more campy. And so there was like rounds of talks of Michael Keaton going into meetings with Joel Schumacher, like not sure that he can do this and just trying to justify his participation in the movie. And then finally they had a conversation where Joel Schumacher goes, I don't understand why it has to be so, so dark and sad though. And Michael Keaton's like, do you know this guy's backstory? Like, do you know what happened to him? Yeah. It's so obvious, he was so mad. He's like, I can't do this movie. I don't care how much money you're paying me, I gotta walk. And that's why they, that's why he was, you know, Val Kilmer got the role and he left. That, I never knew that, but that yeah. makes sense. I know that a lot of people, it just got campier after, it and did. then it returned. I mean, Batman and Robin was really. Bat nips forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's the one nice thing about, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy with Christopher Nolan is it, gave, it definitely grounded it more. Mm -hmm. I mean, for all the jokes and, and fun that we're having here with it, it definitely brought it more to reality in a, in a very strong way. And it provided us one of the coolest villains of all time, which is the Joker. I know he's not talked about as much, but I really do like Bane. I think he's an awesome villain. The way he talks and everything like that, he's definitely got an intimidating presence. I mean, he, he wrecked Batman. And I thought that was cool. There's obviously, you know, holes and stuff like that and jokes to be made about it, but hopefully the the entirety of it all is just a, a fun enough experience that you sort of just let all that go, which for me it did for the most part. Yeah, I love the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. I'm totally okay with letting it go. Yeah. What does Bane say? I was born in the darkness. Uh, no, he, sa he says, you. I forgot what he says about Batman, like you spend time in the darkness, but I was born in it. So oh, it was something like that. Like, yes. Oh, maybe he says, uh, I was born in the darkness. You merely adopted it. Yes. <laughs> it was something like that. I forget exactly. I'll mess it up. The cool thing about Christopher Nolan is that he will give leeway to his actors for very interesting character stuff like that. I remember uh, watching an interview with uh, Heath Ledger, and when they talked, when he talked to Christopher Nolan, uh, he, he thought about it for about ten minutes, and he's like, "That's how I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it like this." And he just knew, and he ran with it. And Christopher Nolan gave him a lot of leeway. And there was a, there was an instance where that scene in The Dark Knight where Joker's like got that guy hostage with the camera and he's like, can I just, can I just have the, I, I, I might be paraphrasing this, but he's like, can I just have the room and just do this on my own? And Christopher Nolan's like, okay. <laughs> and he, he did the thing with the actor by himself in the camera. And when he's got that like very famous cackle, <laughs> that scene, like Heath Ledger, I think improvised. It was just all him, um, you know? So cool. Yeah. Such a good director's choice, too. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about Chris Nol Christopher Nolan that's great, is he chooses really good actors, generally speaking. Most of the time, you're bamboozled by the fact that he's got these great actors that are very well equipped to just handle their shit, right? Tenet was the, one of the first instances where, where I was like, this isn't working, bro. That's like, it's not the same. It's just not the same. My least favorite Nolan movie. Yeah, exactly. The cool thing about the Dark Knight trilogy is, despite it, you know any holes that they're mentioning here, like it is still really cool. Like the movies are really cool and they're definitely rewatchable. And that's one of the things I was saying in my Batman review is, if I own the Dark Knight trilogy and the Batman on my shelf, I think it would be easier for me to put on the Dark Knight trilogy again and again and again, as opposed to the Batman, which, I'm gonna be honest, like I actually like the Batman more, I think, than any of the Dark Knight um, installments. But what I put on again, more likely one of the Dark Knight movies, just because it's fun. Mm -hmm. You know, the Batman movie isn't fun. It's awesome, but it's not fun. It's like, yeah, it's dark. It's an experience. Yeah. Um, whereas the emo dark, Batman. Yeah, emo Batman. But uh, the Dark Knight trilogy is just a fun. It's, it's a fun franchise, and that's the thing about Nolan is he he generally makes fun theater going movies. Mm -hmm. So. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Let us know your feelings in the comments below. Follow Steph Sabra. I'm Jabby Kawe. This is Steph Sabra. Peace out.